Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about my crochet life, making moments and memories. Today, I am going to do a review of all of my whips. And as you can see, there's a fair few. So if you are brand new, hi, welcome to the channel. It's so good to have you here. I hope you really enjoy your time. And if you are returning, hey tribe, what's good? What's happening? Cannot wait to show you all this pile. So I'm in my cozy crochet corner. I've got my flowers, my fairy lights, all the good books and this, this is what you're here for. Now, I did limit myself for quite a while to one knitting project, one crochet project, and one portable project. Look like I'm pledging, aren't I? I pledged three projects, and I stuck to that for the longest time, and it made me really productive, and I got quite a few whips finished, which is always good. And then, December hit, end of December, specifically the 23rd, and my mood just went wee. And that is partly because of the darker months, I find them really difficult, and nothing was really holding my attention. And I didn't want to work on anything that was too, that I had to invest in too heavily. I wanted mindless projects. So I started all the things and then January rolled round and I didn't want to do all the things I wanted something that I could invest myself in <laughs> so I now have this pile um, which I am delving in and out of I'm going to I'm going to show you everything I'm working on but I'm going to caveat it and say that I am now working on one crochet project one knitted project and one portable project and I'm going to keep on working until these are all done. Have you seen the size of this? Now, if you have been on my Instagram, which is HG Designs Crochet, you will have seen this project. I post it today, the 5th of March. And if you are a Tribe Star on Patreon, you will have seen this pretty much from the beginning of January when I wanted that project I could invest in. So this little number is the start of a cropped granny square jumper. I didn't tell you what I'm wearing. <gasps> Pause. So today I am wearing a jumper that my grandmother had knitted for me. It is Aaron knitting. It's got this um, diamond cable pattern down the front. It's got the popcorns here as well. And then it's got a cable down there. That's a plaited cable. And then down the side is another textured pattern. I don't know what that one is. And it's mirrored on the sleeves. I wore this to work today. I work in a conservative, um, a conservative office environment, um, but the cold is real. I don't like being cold, um, and I quite like my body temperature to be a good three or four degrees above what I'd say the average person in the office likes to be at. So I actually have a thermal. Um, long sleeve top under this then have this 100% wool jumper and then I have a blazer on top which just gives it that smart edge I'll show you and then I've just got some black trousers with it um, and I actually wore it with my Doc Martens today but I do have my work shoes at work so I can swap I also have two pairs of socks on um, a normal shop pair and then a thick sports pair just because I'm breaking my docks in and again I don't like being cold and I have been toasty all day and it's been fabulous and I love to wear my knitwear layered I don't know if anybody else does it but I love to wear lay layered knitwear so back to the main event 
this is a cropped granny square jumper that I am working on. This is the body as you can tell. The idea came from the granny square jumper that I have previously been working on and it got paused because I could not figure out the construction um, in terms of the yoke and the shoulders and then I had a brainwave and figured out how I was going to finish it only I didn't want to finish that one I wanted to start another one in this colour um, so the other one that I will finish once I've done this is in a fuchsia and it's very bright and it's also longer whereas this is a crop and I love my crop knitwear um, or in this case crochet wear I love my crop woolens I am using this grey and it is from Audi in the UK um, I got 4 or 500 grams for £5 I think it was 500 grams for 4.99 or 400 grams for 3.99 um, and I have used the same yarn to make repeats of the same squares and they're also on the back but I flipped it so that oh no I did do it so they line up can you see that um, and each square is three rounds four rounds because I've also done a round of grey to join um, and I just used stash yarn I think the granny squares weigh something like 10 grams so you really don't need a lot of stash to make the actual granny squares and I think I've so far I've maybe used 300 grams of the grey because there are all more parts to this um, so it's been a real good stash diver actually. I did buy the grey with the intention to remake the granny square jumper as well. So big ticks for me. Um, so the colours in the centre are mainly Stylecraft. You all know me, you all know that Stylecraft is one of my loves. Um, and then I've also got some random scraps. So you may recognise some of these colours. The khaki, the bottle green, the... I think that's walnut um, they are all stylecraft and they are all from my adventure crocheted cowl that I made I want to make one in black anyway let's finish these whips first um, and then I used a little bit of this grey which is from the pound shop in the UK and then this one is from a shop called Boys and it's their own yarn line and then this bright blue royal blue again I think that was from Boys but I don't think it was Boys own um, so I've made a simple panel of four by four squares which is made a rectangular shape from a cropped jumper I have already done the sides as you can see here the sides are joined and I've done the shaping for the yoke on the back um, and then the front is very simple I have made a cow neck to go with it because I love my winter warmers I don't like the cold air getting to me I like to feel a nice refreshing breeze and fresh air in the room I don't want it on my skin so it's going to be a cow neck, as you can see. So that's going to be stitched into there. And it's really quite big, so it can be folded over, like so. And then I am going to put ribbing around the bottom. So far I've made half of it. So this will go, let me show you upside down, like this. And then... Uh oh. The sleeves. So, last week in my Inside HDDC post for my Tribe Stars on Patreon, I 
basically told them that I'd spent all week making three sleeves, none of which fit. I ripped them all down and realised I really, really, really had to crack the um, calculation for sleeve measurements. It's just one of them things that I don't really want to do because, I don't know, I find sleeves so boring. Sleeves are boring, but I really want them on my jumpers. So I needed to just crack them. Um, so I took the plunge and I used the measurements from Sister Mountain um, and I measured, I used those measurements, I did a gauge swatch mm -hmm, and I worked out how many rows and how many stitches on each for my sleeve. So here are the three that I've rejected um purely because they fit me but they didn't fit the shoulder hole or the arm hole for the jumper so i made three of them you would have thought i see i'm highly logical but in my head i was like i'll just crack on with it it'll be done before you know it wing it as i go along three sleeves in i was like i've wasted all this time it took me no more than 30 minutes, if that, to just sit with the measurements, calculate exactly how many rows, like how many stitches to cast on or chain or start. Um, knitting is cast on, crochet is chain, but it just sounds weird. Anyway, worked out how many stitches I needed um, for the ribbing, how, how many rows, then how many stitches I needed to latch on and how to increase it to get it from 8 inches up to 14 inches in a nice steady shape that didn't look can you see how that bit bows in that was a discarded one and then this one was discarded because can you see the join line it's really fragmented um, and I used a very simple method of marking my increases with stitch markers so that I knew exactly how many stitches I was at. If, if anybody is interested in more details, let me know and I will do a really quick um, video on how to design, calculate, grade your own sleeves and, and once you've got that mastered you'll be able to do it for any garment and any piece of the garment. Um, I have made really good notes in my journal and I'm more than happy to sit and go through that all with you. So this is the sleeve that has made the cut. This is following the pattern that I set out. I see because I sat with my measurements, you in effect reverse engineer the pattern. And so rather than go along, do a few rows, try it on, increase it a bit, do a few more rows, I already knew what I was going to crochet. It's all written out and this whizzed up real, real quick. I had hoped to finish it. I think I've got 13, 13 rows left on this and to get the second one started. Um, I haven't done it it'll get done and then it will be added to my jumper and then I'll be able to wear that one and I already have a forks or faux somebody did tell me off for saying that incorrectly fake leather pleather skirt in the sale which is going to look great with it and my Doc Martens so that's my granny square jumper I like the thought of being able to wear, I like it, I do, I like it, I like the thought of being able to wear granny squares as part of my daily uniform. I could wear that to work under a blazer and it would look smart and I'm really feeling that granny squares as part of my uniform. So that's whip number one. I'm very, very pleased with it really liking the colours. It's very muted for me in a granny square number but it's also highly wearable. 
and I think a lot of you will probably be asking for the pattern for that. It's whip number one. Whip number two is a blanket. So during December when I just felt completely icky and was really struggling, just really struggling to have any motivation or I wasn't feeling inspired even though I knew what I wanted to make. I just I was, wasn't interested in anything. I just wanted to crochet and forget everything. Um, and so I wanted to make granny squares. So I started this blanket and this blanket is called Enough. Um, I'd had enough. I, I really had had enough. And enough is my word for this year. How many times do you think I can say enough? Start counting. <laughs> ting, 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 ting. Um, and also I just wanted to rem remember that I am enough, just like we all are enough. That's about six times now, I think. So I made a batch of squares. And I decided I wasn't buying any more yarn. I'm just going to use up what I've got, which accumulated in all of these. Oh. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blanket, nine blankets, nine squares. They are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rounds each. Um, and I pretty much picked that they would have a block like so um, with one colour, then an outer edge of three rounds of the second colour and then be rounded in white. I'm going to join this. I think I decided I was joining it in black. Um, and this pattern was inspired by a picture in my journal um, which I will insert for you and I was going to use the same joining colour and I just looked at some of the um, squares amongst it and decided that's how mine was going to be set out. There are a few that are going to be like this where the outer edge isn't white um, and I wanted to do it so that this would be in between a white edge like so. Um, haven't decided how many squares it's going to be, the blanket. Uh, I think that's my favourite. I think it is. I don't know where these little accents come from but I keep saying I like it, I like it, I do like it. I like this one. I really like this one. Um, and they work really well and it's just using up the random bits of yarn that are in my stash. I think I might make it relatively big, maybe double bed size, queen bed if you're in America. Um, we'll see. The only reason I didn't carry on with this, it would have grown really rapidly but I kind of needed to be at home to use my stash or I needed to plan it out so what I did was I opened up the tubs of my stash and I was just pulling out colours to make these um, but it didn't make it very portable because I've got a lot of stash <laughs> and because it wasn't portable I wasn't really working on it as much it was something I was working on in the evening um, I didn't have the headspace to pull out the yarn and plan it so also, I kind of talked myself out of it a little bit because I was like, I don't need another blanket. Where am I going to keep it? And then I was like, who cares where you'll keep it? I want to make it, so I'm going to make it. So this is the Enough blanket. It's growing quite nicely and I think those colours look really good. Just the pops of colour that are in there. It's just using double knit yarn, which is eight ply. Um, it's all acrylic, it's all my cheap stash yarn, my favorite. And I'm just using the odds and ends because I'm trying to have a major de-stash to make room to buy 
so much more yarn <laughs> um and i'm at that stage now where i just have a, a lot of random bits that i'm not gonna be able to make anything huge with but something like this definitely that's enough whip number two whip number three i'll show you this one is this now this is another stash buster i started this i think back in november and was working on it and i only showed it to the tribe stars um and it got parked because it is one of my own designs and i didn't want didn't have the headspace for it um this is a scrap yarn project it's using these scrap yarn balls magic cakes and what i do is i get the odds and ends of my yarn and i magic knot them together and it creates scrap yarn cakes and i've got quite a lot of it because i have been working on ripping down lots of my abandoned whips and um tester squares gauge swatches and things like that to use them up into projects like this um, and so I made two panels which were going to be the front and back of you guessed it a cropped jumper only I have changed my mind on it um, I want to make it more oversized and I've got the shape in my head and the design I've got the shape and the design features all in my head um, I know exactly what it's going to look like and so this is going to be ripped down and remade into um, said image and also I was having a mare with the sleeves I chose to work these ones flat I will be working them in the round um, and I will be calculating them before I start there was two sleeves so that will get ripped down, made back into said balls and then made up into image in my mind. Um, I'm actually holding this double knit yarn, double, with a strand of four ply in black, which gives it a mild effect and it just calms down the colours a little bit and just pulls it all together. And I really, really like the effect. Um, and I've got an idea of a set, like a bottoms and a top for this. So once the granny square jumper is designed and my pattern's written down for future use, I'm going to crack on with this one. It doesn't have a name. I'm sure it'll come to me as I work on it. So that's whip number three. Should have summarised and said my whips are two jumpers, a cardigan, three blankets and two pairs of socks. Um, so the next project is a blanket and I have got stacks and stacks and more stacks. Oh, actually I'm working on three pairs of socks and more stacks and more stacks of squares and half squares and they are to form a granny square project which was inspired by the quilting block um quilted what are they called? Come on, word. Inspired by the quilting blocks within one of my mum's quilting books. So when people make patchwork quilts, they usually make patchwork, they usually make blocks and put them together. And I wanted to do the same, but using granny squares. And so I have made pretty much all of the coloured centres. Um, I've gone for quite a pastel -y palette it's got this lemon yellow i've got um this is actually called mushroom by stylecraft but it's a very light lilac mauve 
Um, then it's got Candy Floss Pink by Stylecraft. It's got Sky Blue by Stylecraft. Stylecraft, Stylecraft. Stylecraft, you should sponsor me. Um, these ones are Peach by Stylecraft. And so on and so forth. This one is pound shop yarn it's glittery and it's what I put my two round granny square curtain together with um, I've made pretty much all the center blocks and what I need to make up is a load of cream and white center blocks so that I can join it all together um, two reasons why I've paused on this one I wanted to go and buy some cream and some white for the centers and seems a little bit silly to go do that when I have so much yarn that I can use for other projects even though I want to get this one finished and also because I'm going to mattress stitch the squares together something that I need to go and learn to do probably take me two minutes um, but I haven't gone and taught myself how to do that um, and then I've not decided what colour so these will be mattress stitched together in blue, makes sense. But what about when it comes to attaching these two? Do I do cream or do I do blue? So I need to do a couple of like test joins just to see which one I prefer. So that has gone on pause until I get more yarn and I teach myself how to mattress stitch. That blanket doesn't have a name yet either. Um, it was just called my quilt block design. But I've got bundles and bundles of the half squares or the triangles, whichever one you want to call them as well. I'm loving those colors. They're quite spring-like, aren't they? Um, and then I've got a pair of crochet socks in here which I'm not going to show you because they're just a prototype. And then, I think that takes us to, oh, I've got the knitted projects to show you now. So that's my crochet whips, um, including a pair of crochet socks that are using the same yarn. So the double knit with the four ply black held together to make a pair of boot socks which I had paused because, I don't know, I think it's because I needed to work out sizing and whatnot and I didn't really have the headspace. Um, so again, I'm just gonna sit, work out the measurements for the different sizes, reverse engineer the pattern, make it up. Um, and now I've got my Doc Martens, I am even more I really want to get them done because it's something I could wear with my docks because they're quite thick um, and I also had the idea to make a pair of mittens it's just so many ideas but in effect it's a pair of really snug slipper socks and that's going to be the heel um, and they work up really quick really really quick I can't remember what size hook I was using but I've got all the details in my journal um, so that's two blankets. Oh, I've got another blanket, but I've only made the centers because I want to start another two round granny square blanket. Um, and what I'm doing is when I'm putting this together, if I've got tiny little bits, I'm making centers and then I'm putting them in a jar. So I'm not gonna show you that one because it's just a jar of centers right now. I'm really excited about it. But I'm gonna keep that one stashed. Um, my plan is to make, say, 10 to 20 centres a week for the entire year and then at the end of the year I'm going to put that together and that's going to be massive, like mega massive and I think I'm going to join it in grey. Yes. Yes. Grey or glitter white, one or the other. But that's going to be a long term whip and that's going to be one that you will see later on on the channel so of course subscribe and like and then you'll get to see it um 
So that's crochet. Then we go on to the knitted projects because I've had my needles out in action as well. Um, I've got two knitted projects on the go at the moment and one that I've swatched for, which is ready and waiting, but not right now. Like I need to get some of these finished. This basket's huge. Um, I've got a pair of socks on the go and this is because it's a portable project. And it's in this brown colour. Oh, you can see it, that's good. I got this brown colour when I went away in October and I decided to make a pair of socks and I've just cast on in this contrasting mini skein that I had which I've also done the heel in and I'm now onto the foot. Um, I swatched for a pattern in broken rib and I thought that would make a really good pair of socks. Why hasn't anybody done that? And I got this far and I was like, this is token forever. I don't like it. I don't, I don't like it. So <laughs> I had to break it up a little bit and I put in this um, neck, another textured stitch in effect, then put another chunk of the broken rib stitch and then more texture. And I'm just gonna work my way down um, they're quite plain but it works relatively fast because you're always trying to get to the next block. Um, I'm not entirely sure that I'll make a second one. I think I'm going to have a lot of unmatching, non-matching socks in my sock box. Um, because I just got my Doc Martens which I might have mentioned a couple of times because I'm excited. Um, I'm going to use that box as my sock box and I have an image that there's going to be lots of random socks like this and I'll just wear them as pairs even though they'll be nothing like each other but they're a pair because they were manufactured by the same person whether they look the same or not. Um, or will I just make a second one? I don't know. I'm like not hugely keen on it, but I like it. But it's boring and I want to do something else. I don't know. Vote below whether I should do the second or if I should just make my sock box completely non-matching socks. They're going to be completely non-matching, aren't they? Maybe somebody could do the second one for me. I have got... Um, the foot, I've done that much of the foot and the toe to do. I think this one will be finished in the next week or so. I only knit on this when I'm in church. I did put the heel in out of church, but other than that, that is a couple of hours on a Sunday and maybe an hour on a Tuesday. Uh, I started this middle of Feb I think. I think I've been working on it for two maybe three weeks now. I am very pleased that you can see that stitch pattern. I really like my textured stitches. Um, I found the yarn just a little bit plain, a little bit boring but I like to wear my more neutral colours and I wasn't even sure like I think that doesn't really go. I'm just unsure on the en entire sock um, but I figured I've got this far, why not just finish it off? Or shall I just rip it all out? Sock dilemmas. This is why I never get socks finished because I, I just can't decide on them. And if I had done two at a time, the second one would almost be done, wouldn't it? But anyway. Do I continue with the sock? And if I continue, do I make a second? Vote below. I feel like we should have some emojis in this. If you can vote emojis, like if you want to see a second one, then do like a brown and a, a brown heart and then a pink heart. But if you think I should just ditch it and do multicolored, put like a yellow heart or something. Fill it with hearts. And then we'll see which colors come out the most. So 
a brown and a pink heart if you think I should continue and if you think I should make a different sock, not the second sock. If you think I should make that doesn't that doesn't heather word. So if you think I should finish this sock, put a brown and a pink heart. If you think I should scrap the second one and start on another design, you go with a yellow heart. Okay? See what the hearts say. It's all love either way, it's all love. So that is my my textured sock. I kind of wanted to call it my ugly or my boring sock, which is, neither of them are good words, are they? Uh. And that is living in my Josie Rose project bag made out of the Marauders map fabric. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And then, my other knitted project is in my second Josie Rose bag and that's the Deathly Hallows bag in the Gryffindor colourway and this is like a prized project. This is an Aaron cardigan that I started knitting myself. It's something I've always wanted to conquer and so I cast on and this is one of the sleeves. I was I cast on the back and I would make a mistake. I was so frustrating and the back panel's quite big and I was making no no progress at all. So I started on the sleeve and I also messaged my friend Nicole and was like, help me, I'm just I can't follow the patterns and she said, write it out row for row. And so I did. I sat there. And I wrote out the entire pattern repeat for the sleeve, including the increases and then the decreases, which I've just started. And it's a game changer, my friends. It's a game changer. You think it's a waste of time. In actual fact, it saved me so much time because once I had this, this written out, I think I've ripped back like two rows, whereas before, I was following it, it was wrong, it wasn't matching up, the pattern didn't look right. And look at how much I've done. This yarn is a um, Audi special and it's in this really nice, I don't even know what colour to call it. But it's like um, an oatmeal, I don't know, I don't know what that is, but I love it. It's a very neutral beige, but it's got a really nice sheen to it and it's going to look good and I'm really liking my neutral knitwear right now. Um, so that looks great. There's sleeve number one and then I've got sleeve number two. Uh, and then this one there's a slight fault in the pattern just here. Can you see my thumb? So I'm going to take that back those few rows and then they both then need their decreases. Once I've built this one back up and come on a little bit more, they need their decreases. And I kind of stopped because I wasn't really keen on decreasing and I cast on the back and I've got the ribbing so far. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the pattern for this back panel. I'm going to get it up to the point of the decreases. I'm going to conquer the decreases on the sleeves, get those done and bound off and then I'm going to do the decreases on the back panel and then I've got the two fronts. I've already picked out the buttons and then this is going to make an absolutely gorgeous cardigan. And I had gone off it a little bit, but getting it out now and having worn an iron all day, I want this done and I want it in my wardrobe. And I don't have, I've got one, two cardigans that are both store brought in my entire wardrobe. I definitely, definitely could do with some more. So that is my big knitting project and I'm loving it. I'm really proud of it just got the decreases to conquer 
um, and then the back panel is a little bit more um, detailed in the pattern than the sleeves it's got um, a few more cable detailings so I'm looking forward to getting my head around those especially because I then like to put them into socks I don't know how comfy it is wearing like a cabled sock does it rub in your shoes are they just better for sleep socks I don't know but I love the way the patterns are building up I'm loving my textures so that's my second knitted project my cable needles pink I love it I love it I love it I do and that's in my Josie Rose bag Whew, I blasted through those quick drive so that's all of my whips that I'm working on right now that is two jumpers my granny square jumper and the scrap yarn jumper my knitted cardigan three blankets the quilt block the two round one that I'm yet to display I'm keeping that under wraps um, I will show you tribe stars this weekend though as promised and then I'm making my um, enough blanket quilt block enough and the two round square and then I've got a pair of crochet socks and a pair of knitted socks on the go and I've also swatched for another knitted project. It's been a very very busy and productive and fruitful year so far for the whips and I think the one I'm most looking forward to showing you finished this is number two I'm most looking forward to showing you that finished but number one is definitely this so I am going to round this up and get it edited and out to you and whilst I'm doing that I'm going to work on getting the sleeves finished and then over the weekend I'm going to write up the write out the pattern for my Aaron cardigan so I can get back onto that um, and then also I ripped down the socks that I'd been working on I'd, I called them Lacy Fern they'd been dubbed Lacy Fern um, and I was using the grey by Coop Snipped with the glitter and I decided to take the glitter out so I've ripped it all down and they need restarting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my whips again this time next month so at the start of April I'm going to show you what my whips are and out of these projects what's finished Whew. so please comment below with um, your heart emojis brown and pink if I should continue with the sock and then a yellow emoji if you think sock number two should be something completely different if you don't have emojis then write below what you think and also if you want let me know which one was your favorite project because there's plenty to choose from and then i will see you again in a month's time start of april for another whip roundup um, and we'll see where we're at Whew. i feel quite inspired now i've been through it all really looking forward to getting some of these finished off and I've actually made quite a lot of progress without even realising especially on the knitted iron cardigan because I'm a slow knitter I can crank out granny squares with my eyes shut and I've proved that but knitting I'm a bit like this check my pattern check my work <laughs> so you can see that that's some serious hours I've put into that so I really hope that you've enjoyed this vlog give it a thumbs up put your comments below I love to see them and I know that you all love to have a good chat amongst yourselves as well and I'm here for that um, and then just in terms of the other vlogs that I've got going up 
I am posting weekly. I am now posting weekly on Fridays, which means you have the whole of the weekend to watch the vlogs. So you've got a little bit of Friday knowing that you've got through your working week and there's a HDDC vlog waiting for you. Um, I am at the start of the month, I'm doing my whip roundup. Then at the end of the month, I'm doing HDDC hot right now. I have just posted one of those last week. And in that I do a roundup of the latest crochet patterns that have been released, knitted patterns, um, and then books uh, that I've been binging, podcasts that I've been devouring, or even the other way around. And then in between, I'm just doing two vlogs of what working on projects in effect. So they're more, um, rather than, Blah, 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 blah. rather than me being sat in front of the camera it's you seeing what I'm working on as I work on it um, sort of like progress vlogs um, so you should see one of those on this next week so I really hope that you've liked this vlog and I will see you again in the next video take care tribe and happy making moments and memories see ya